45.5 million are employed full time. That's 30 percent. I give you the context. I give you the history. I fight fake news with facts. Kayo Day. No, Kayo Day. I will. I will let you talk. Kayo Day. Kayo Day. I will let you talk if you let me talk. Kayo Day. That's why more and more Lagosians are tuning in. Half a million Lagosians. 720,000. 970,000. Over one million Lagosians. They know that if you give me your afternoon, I will give you hard facts. No, 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 no. I am Sandra Ezekwasili, and these are your hard facts. Hello, Lagos. Good afternoon. I am Sandra Ezekwasili, and these are your hard facts. First hard fact of the day 241 confirmed COVID cases yesterday. 35 of those uh, were in Lagos. I said yesterday that the fourth wave is over, but please stay safe. Do what my intern is doing and wear your mask. When you must go out to work to buy essentials, wear that mask and keep your distance from people. Shift from me. Shift, shift, Sarah, uh, Sandra, shift. <laughs> and wash your hands and sanitize your hands as frequently as possible. Uh, thank you for tuning into the show today. I have a great one for you. It's an extended big three uh, up until 4.30, hopefully. Let me confirm, Shad, that it's up to up until 4.30 so that we're not caught by surprise the same way that we were caught by surprise um, yesterday. So, okay, so it's not going to be up to 4.30. But we'll have a few minutes within the four o'clock hour to keep talking about some of these stories on the big three today. Uh, but on the big three, let's talk about NAFDAQ banning the sale of strong spirits in sashes. Then let's talk about the federal government backtracking on subsidy removal. That's uh, probably the biggest conversation in the, in the country today. Then let's talk about Raymond Dokwesi saying that the Southeast should wait four years for the presidency. Uh, like I said, there's no community report today, but there's also no big hard fact today because AFCON is on. So let's get started with the big three, shall we? I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, and these are your hard facts. This is the big three. The big three. On the hard facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. Will the ban on uh, uh, sachet, what's the word now, alcoholic drinks, strong spirits in sachets, will it work? Will it be enforceable? Will the federal government pay Namdi Kanu his awarded damages? And will the National Assembly harmonize the Electoral Act Amendment Bill in time? Let's get into the stories. Lagos, those are your big three. NAFDAQ has ordered a rolling ban on alcohol in small pet bottles or sachets. That's our first story. I said rolling ban because sachets and pet bottles that are already on the market can still be sold. So in the first phase, NAFDAQ has stopped giving new registrations. So that, that means that um, the distillers that are already producing these items can keep doing so until uh, January 31st of 2024, when the total ban begins. But even before then, these uh, distillers, those distillers will cut their production in half by next Monday, January 31st. This is a Baloguan broad story. Uh, now, I should point out that this wasn't an overnight decision. I should point that out. It was actually decided back in December 2018. There was a meeting between NAVDAQ, um, the Health Ministry, um, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Council, the Distillers and Blenders Association, and the Association of Food, Beverages, and to Tobacco Employers. And they all agreed that selling strong alcohol in these small containers was dangerous because underage drinkers were more likely to get them, and it made it... Uh, cheaper to sustain a drinking habit. So they decided to organize this uh, phased ban. I should be clear that this only applies to drinks that have more than 30% alcohol by volume. So the hard stuff like vodka and tequila. Now my question to you is, do you agree with NAVDAQ? and the stakeholders that alcohol abuse and underage drinking are very rampant. 
Do you agree that these smaller drinks are making the problem worse? And do you believe that phasing them out and ultimately banning them totally by 2024 will help curb the problem? What do you think about NAVDAQ's approach of consulting the businesses that make these drinks and agreeing to a six-year plan to ban these products? Do you think that this is more this is a more rational way to go about banning something than to do like a sudden ban like we've seen from other government agencies? What do you think? Women call me on 01465-7190. 01465-7190. Men call me on 0700-993-993-993. 0700-993-993-993. Hello, thanks for calling us. Sorry about that. Call back if you can. Hello. 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 Good afternoon. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Benjamin. Benjamin, good to have you on the show. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, I want to talk about two things. Okay. The harmonization, electoral harmonization, and um, the ban. Let me start with the harmonization. Are you with me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I'm hearing you. Go ahead. Yeah. Look, I called before, I said it before, and I will say it again. The National Assembly is working hand in hand with the executive. That bill will not be signed. They are just wasting taxpayers' money because they know of a fact that once they sign the electoral bill, whether they are monarch, direct, indirect, uh, what's it called, the cons um, consensus candidate, once they sign it, they know what will happen. They know most of them will lose their seat. So they are just wasting our time. They won't do anything. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I still blame the president. The president, his claim is not what he's doing. The president was, was fast to, or quick to sign the appropriation bill and the uh, Petroleum Act. That's why the fact that people complained that they had some errors, there are some things about but he was quick to sign it. Why is he not quick or why are they not quick to do that of the electoral bill? Hello? I'm listening. Go ahead. Why are they not quick to do it? They know what they are doing. They know that if they sign this bill, somebody that comes from a party D or party A or an independent candidate, if the person contests, the person will win because the person is popular. They know they won't sign it. They're just wasting our time. And they know this bill will help us. It will help us to go a long way. They know they won't sign it. So that is that for that. Right. For the for the for the um, ban on um, Tashe Akwal, mm. you welcome idea. Okay, but I doubt if they will implement it. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling. We've got Randerson in local jail on the line. Randerson, good to have you on the show. Hello, Randerson. Randerson. Hello. Oh, call back if you can. Ninety nine point three. Hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. 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 Good afternoon. What's your name? Good afternoon. My name is Chinonso. Chinonso, you're calling our number for women. The number you should be calling is 0700-993-993-993. Thank you very much for calling. Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Hello, Sandra. Hello. Can you turn the radio off? Turn the radio off. Oh, no, sorry. I can't stay on the call with that person. They have to turn their radio off so that we can have a conversation. 99.3, hello. Mr. Excellency, is Sandra, is your question? Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? Good afternoon to you. I'm so much excited to have your voice this afternoon. Now. I, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Go ahead. My name is Azubika. I'm from your show. Welcome, Azubika. Going to this uh, banning of uh, alcoholic sachets. Hmm. It's not the main issue okay. that Nigeria is facing. Okay. We have a lot of issues that is, is more worse than that uh, alcoholic uh, banding of such as. Okay. If it comes to Lagos now, yeah, especially uh, uh, on that bridge, hmm. uh, coming to Arena, 
you know, show the uh, front of that uh, army shopping like one place. Mm -hmm. If you see the way people are smoking in their hand, as if they are smoking a uh, gun, are you getting me? Okay. That is the main important thing that the government should supposed to look into well um, um i mean they're smoking indian hemp uh, and indian hemp is illegal and um that's the that's the that's another purview of a different agency ndlea and every day in the news we're hearing the ndlea going after all kinds of they are not going um, anywhere they're not going anywhere they're only chasing the the innocent people okay are you getting me okay so burning that uh, subject of uh, alcoholic hmm. Even she banned it, mm -hmm. I may like it, but those big, big ones, huh? what will they do to it? Because they can be able to gather money and they uh, continue to buy that big one, and that problem will still be there. Yeah, but that one is so, still expensive now. It's more expensive to buy the big one than it is to no buy matter, the small one. No matter how it's expensive, mm -hmm. it, people may still continue to buy that one. Okay. It okay. does not stop anything. Okay. So let us uh, ban India first. In the hand, is getting out of hand in this country. All right. Thank you very much for calling us, Zubike. We've got Dr. Emmanuel on the line. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel Ojungwa Richard. Good to have you on the show. Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Samuel. Good afternoon. I, I can. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from the Gambia. Oh, good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, I want to speak on the on the electoral uh, amendment. Okay. Um, just like the uh, first speaker. Um, said hmm. this the president is just wasting our time i know they do what favors them they pick what they what they like you know in the same this same country a, a a a chief judge was 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 removed within few 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 weeks changed and replaced by somebody else hmm. so what is there in signing this electoral electoral act amendment is because they know that if they sign it, it's over for almost all of them. So this country, I don't know. I, I, I don't know the madness we have in this country. People choose what they what they want to do and and, and, and just do it. You know? Then the, the second one is about the ban. Hmm. Well, I, I feel it's, it's a welcome development. Okay. It's something that if they do, uh, it will help. But we all know Nigeria. Nigeria is just anything goes. Implementation is going to be a problem. Yeah. Thank okay. You very much. Thank you very much for uh, calling us. We appreciate it. Let's move on to our second story where the federal executive is backtracking on its plan to end fuel subsidy from July. Uh, yesterday, Finance Minister Zainab Ahmed, uh, Junior Petroleum Minister uh, Timmy Press Silva, and NMPC GMD Miliki Ari ran back to the National Assembly asking them to amend the budget to accommodate um, fuel subsidy from July to December. The budget uh, that the president um, uh, signed only funds the subsidy until the end of June because under the Petroleum Industry Act, which the president also signed, the downstream sector has been deregulated and subsidy is over. The initial plan was for a six-month transition period ending on July 1st. But organized labor said that this was unacceptable. The NLC has planned a nationwide uh, protest for this Thursday, the 25th. And they believe that the executive is making a U-turn in fear of that protest. But the ministers told the National Assembly that this was not true. That, uh, In fact, let me give you the reason that Ahmed gave for the change of plan. She said, quote, After the budget was passed, we had consultations with a number of stakeholders and it became clear that the timing was problematic. We discovered that practically there is still heightened inflation and that the removal of subsidy would uh, further worsen the situation situation and impose more difficulties on the citizenry. Mr. President does not want to do that. What we are now doing is to continue with the ongoing discussions and consultations in terms of putting in place a number of measures, end quote. It's very interesting, right? Very interesting that the Minister of Finance is saying that she and the government only discovered that there was inflation after the budget was passed last month. I find that very interesting. Because we've been living with heightened inflation for years since the border closure. 
Anyway, my first question is, do you believe Ahmed's position that the government has changed its mind because um, they just discovered that we have inflation? Or do you think that um, this change took place because of the protest? Or do you agree with Olumide Akbata? Olumide Akbata is the Nigerian Bar Association president. And he said that the government is backpedaling because elections are barely a year away. Now, before I let you answer, I think I need to clarify something. I'm sure that some of you are asking, didn't they already remove the subsidy? Wasn't that what happened the last time that they raised the pump price? Well, yes and no. At the time, the government let the pump, uh, the pump price rise to remove or reduce subsidy payments. Yes. But when the landing cost of petrol kept rising, the government decided to keep the pump price stable. And so they started paying subsidy again or under recovery, as the NMPC likes to stylishly call it. That's what they started paying again. So that's what's been happening since then. But as the landing costs rise, the difference between landing cost and pump price rises as well, meaning that subsidy is eating more and more of government's money. It's estimated that if National Assembly amends this budget, subsidy may gulp over 4.6 trillion naira this year. And the question always is, can Nigeria afford it? Meanwhile, the NLC says it won't cancel the protest. The TUC isn't uh, joining them, but they say that they will organize their own protest the moment government stops paying the subsidy. Femi Falano has asked Nigerians to join the NLC protest. On the other side of the fence, Afeni Ferrer has criticized the president for changing his mind. The group said that the president has failed to remove subsidy after claiming in his 2015 campaign that it was a scam. And petroleum industry uh, stakeholders are concerned about what signal this change in direction will send to the world and to potential investors. Remember I said the end of subsidy was enshrined in the Petroleum Industry Act. Remember I said that. So the question from the industry is, if the government can discard an important part of the PIA less than six months after it was signed, how can investors be confident to enter the market that that law governs? So many sides to this story. Feel free to talk to me about the one that matters to you. 01465-7190 for women, for women only. 01465-7190. And then for men, 0700-993-993-993. We're streaming live on Facebook, so share your thoughts there. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. Uh, we also have uh, WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. And we are also streaming on YouTube. YouTube is Nigeria Info fm 99.3 hello hello, hello good, afternoon, good, good afternoon what's your name my name is sandra calling from asaba Delta State. sandra from asaba welcome good to have you on the show sorry about that 99.3 hello good afternoon sandra good afternoon how are you doing i'm okay my dear welcome go ahead my name is Prince Wyatt, calling from Amor Dauphin. Mm, welcome. Number one, the electoral B, Mr. President, must sign. He must sign. What did the senator and the rep have finished the, the job? He said they have to take it to the people of Mr. President. He will sign it, and I'm sure that for that. For the subsidy, <laughs> whether we like it or not, PIB did not recognize a subsidy. And as of today, so that government can never be refinery. The one we the have at hand should be disposed of. Because corruption will, will, will not make it work. How many years have we been hearing? Uh, Refurbishing, uh, trafficking, repair, and that day, nothing happened. Not, not, no good thing that happened for that uh, for refinery. We, we have. It is better for them to sell it off, maybe as a scrap. Let the, the, the competent individual take it over. I pay off the, the freer government. Now, something we are talking about, whether we like it or not, where did that go to and all that is to come on board? Something we go for the freer government of most prepare, not this 5,000 they are recommending now. But the, because when you say you are giving 5,000 to the less literate people, it's some people who pocket majority of the money. What I wanted to do, preserve 
500 billion into Nigeria Nepal Congress to buy buses. Both the old, the young, the poor, we benefit from this. We will see it physically. This is the subsidy uh, uh, relief for Nigeria. If they can do this, uh, my president, I'm telling you, he will get better. My president, Sandra, mm. are you listening to me? I'm listening to you. You must listen to us. We are for you. <laughs> Have a blessed day yourself. Have a blessed day yourself. Thank you very much for calling. All right, we've got a couple of minutes before we have to... to do we have a break? No, we don't. Okay, so we can keep going. 99.3. Hello, Sandra. Good evening. Good evening. Good to have you on the show. Welcome. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my name is Ngozi. Welcome. Yeah, Sandra, I want to react on the alcohol ban. That's the Sachet alcohol. Mm. Uh, for me, I'm indifferent in it because most of the things that we ban here in Nigeria are actually the things that sell the most. And automatically it will become a hot cake and people will start hoarding it and at the end of the day, the aim for the ban is being defeated. And most times, security agencies is just creating another source of business for the police itself. I feel the best thing to do in other civilized nations, when you see things like this, banning everything is not the way out. You can impose a heavy tax on the company that produces these things. By so doing, the price goes up. And those category of people you are afraid of taking these things mm. will automatically be cut off when it goes up. Mm. Just like some people are asking, how about the other bottle ones? Mm. It's not every person that could afford those ones. Mm -hmm. But these smaller ones, even children, you see them in, there in the motor park mm. taking these things. Mm. You even see some mothers using it to mix some concussion for their newborn babies mm. and give it to them. Ew. So aside the ban, I think we need a serious awareness in Nigeria when it comes to alcohol abuse and drugs. Mm. It has eaten deep into the society. Right. Then coming to that of the the build, Sandra. Right. I feel we Nigerians are not ready to move from where we are. Okay. I would have expected by now every constituency going back to their base. Call back your senators, your house members. Dictate to them this is what we want. The labor that is planning strike. I wonder why I've not seen any organization threatening for for maybe protests or something. Force these people to do the right thing. They are there to work for Nigerians and not to work for themselves. But what we see is people come to social media. Some people don't even know what is going on at all. We just talk and everybody goes back and at the end of the day, we go back to square one. I think we are not ready for democracy when we are ready or probably when we have suffered enough then everybody will go back to the drawing board. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for calling us, Ngozi. Let's go to WhatsApp and see the messages you uh, we have there. WhatsApp is, uh, like I said, 080-959-75805. 080-959-75805. And you can also share your thoughts with us on Facebook. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. All right, so for some reason, I'm not able to... Uh, um, uh, see my messages on WhatsApp, but um, let's see, let's see, let's see if they're gonna if they're gonna come in. Let's see if they'll come in. Let's see if they'll come in. Mm, okay, all right. They seem to be coming in. They seem to be coming in. All right, good, 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 good. Once they are all loaded, I'll come and read some of those messages. In the meantime, let me read the messages uh, from our Facebook live stream. On Facebook, we have this message from Coyote Samuel who says, Sandra, it's a pity we've fallen uh, to the scam called fuel subsidy. Does it mean our refineries will definitely remain unused for life? Let Nigerians ask the government the actual problem with the refineries. The amount of money to be used to pay uh, some people can be used to provide transportation for the populace not selected people all right we've got more people's uh with more people with messages here or labo de michael says it's a welcome decision but it will be a loss to herb hawkers and sellers in bear palos all right uh Oladele, uh david says do you know that this sachet alcoholic ban will affect more than what we are looking at for now okay like what what do you think uh, happens here what do you think will happen here let me come back to the phone lines. 99.3, hello. Yeah, President Sandra. Good to have you on the show, sir. What's your name? 
Good afternoon. This is Chris. Hi, Chris. Welcome. Go ahead. Thank you, my president. I don't know why people are cutting calls with this executive and the uh, senators and the Bajabiamila group about this uh, signing um, electoral law. Like the president, he has the anointed candidate, right? Is it is it compulsory that all Nigerians will vote for that candidate? Okay. Uh -huh. So if we know, we can do that. Let's forget about whether the man signed or not. Because they're just food dragging. Before you know it, so there's no time anymore to sign the electoral whatever. Let's start our feet. Whoever they bring, we should sideline that person and vote our choice. Okay. You people have been telling us, get your PVC, get your PVC. How many are they, these politicians? How many are they? Then for the, uh, the alcohol something, for me, I think it's good. That's such a one. Because you see some of these guys who operate all these commercial buses, they have like two, three in their pocket. By the time they drive two, ten meters, they, they, they tear off the thing and drink it. Some will involve in an accident, and when you see the driver, is high already. Then for those, who, you know, road safety have been saying something, oh, we can pay this, go to the garage, don't sell it. But you go to the garage, you see those women, they put that thing in their basin or basket or whatever. Hmm. Sometimes they use cloth to cover it. Then when they look around, no uh, security, then they, they, they unveil the thing. So it's good. Let them stop that. Since last year, they've been talking about bounding that small container one. Mm -hmm. Then for the um, uh, 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 subsidy, it's not because of labor. It's because of election, like uh, the uh, NBA people said. The new election is coming up in uh, uh, February next year. I thought they said they have uh, this uh, 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 I don't care attitude. Mm. But all I have to say, with all what we go through with this APC government, I want to see who will come out and say, yes, let's go back to that stormy water. Thank you, President Sandra. Thank you very much for calling, Chris. For our third story, let's look at the latest milestones on the road to 2023. Raymond Okwesi says that if elected president, Atiku Abubakar will serve only one term. Dokwesi is the head of a group called the Atiku Abubakar Campaign Technical Committee. Now, I should note that Atiku has not declared his intention to run yet. But when you have groups calling themselves his campaign technical committee, it seems like it may just be a matter of time. Dr. Kessie said uh, Atiku will only serve one term to rebalance the zoning agreement between North and South, since Umaru Yaradua only served one term. He said that after that single term, the presidency should be zoned to the Southeast in 2027. He said any other arrangement would amount to injustice since the Southeast is the only Southern zone yet to produce a president in the Fourth Republic. But um, let's do some quick math, shall we? Assuming but not conceding that uh, North-South rotation and zoning is the way to go, um, quick math. From 1999 to 2007, Obasanjo served... South, two terms. Then Yaradua, North, one term. Well, one incomplete term. Then Jonathan, he finished Yaradua's term, then did one of his own, South. So that's a third term for the South. Three terms and one year. Basically three terms. Then Buhari, two terms, North. So that's two terms and three years from the North, basically three terms. So when you look at that, assuming but not conceding that rotation and zoning is the way to go, do you agree with uh, Dr. Bessie that the North should get one more term before the presidency returns to the South? Or do you believe that both zones are more or less equal now? And so the rotation should be moved to the South? The coalition of uh, civil society groups uh, thinks that... Um, it should. Yesterday, they blockaded the national headquarters of both the PDP and the APC, and they were demanding that both parties uh, should zone the presidency to the south. So that's the latest on the road to 2023. And of course, we're still waiting for a uh, word about what will happen with uh, the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, because, well, time they tick, time they go. But talk to me, Lagos. Do you believe Dr. Pesci is speaking for Atiku? 
when he makes his uh, one-term pledge. And even if, you know, even if you believe Dokwesi, do you believe Atiku or any other politician, really, can be trusted when they say that they will only serve one term? Because remember that Atiku himself is alleged uh, by his supporters to have been cheated by Obasanjo, who allegedly promised only to do one term. And of course, we all remember the Northern APC leaders accusing Jonathan of allegedly going back on a one-term pledge as well. So would politicians be wise to trust such a private pledge from Atiku? And what do you think about Okwesi's uh, specific zoning argument? What do you think about the CCSG, Coalition of Civil Society Groups? What do you think about them saying that, uh, nah, we disagree with... Uh, uh, Doc Bessie, and we think that um, the presidency should be zoned to the south. We've got about 10 minutes before we have to bring you Amber, so let's play, shall we? 0700-993-993-993-01465-7190. Only women call 01465-7190. Only men call 0700-993-993-993. If you are abroad, uh, you can call us via Skype. Skype is Nigeria Info FM. WhatsApp is 80 Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Good afternoon. This is Mommy Choma. Mommy Choma, welcome. Well, Dr. C. If Naibo then say, you can have more. It's just they learn. <laughs> just they learn. You don't know what you need to talk. Make you go sit down one place. <laughs> it's not a politician. So all this always they talk, it's just they learn. Make you go sit down. We know, we know, we know you don't take it on at all. Ah. Uh, okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks for calling. 99.3. Hello. <laughs> Hello. All right, then call back if you can. 99.3. Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Auntie Sandra, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? All these are, uh, I don't tire to make sense where they are for Nigeria. Please find something else to tell us. All these things affect some people's feelings, please. Mm. Yeah, I'm telling you, okay. these cock and bush entities, wave them off. I, I know that we don't have a government and we are not ready to have a government. Okay, thank you for calling. 99.3. Hello. Hello, thanks for calling. What's your name? Yeah, this is Facebook. I'm from Ikrodi. Call, uh, turn your radio off. I don't turn it off. Okay, good go ahead. Good evening, good evening, Sandra. Good evening, welcome. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to comment on Ndamdekano. Can I? No, we're not talking about Ndamdekano today. Okay, for the question, the question just like, uh, it's, uh, it's running for Atiku. Adi, why can't the question say that Ibo man should go first before uh, uh, Atiku? If any Ibo man no rule this country in 2023, there's nothing like Nigeria. That is what I want to tell you. Understand? The cheating is too much. If you woman no rule 2023, that's nothing like Nigeria. This All right, you can't keep saying that. Uh, I don't understand what you mean by that. I mean, uh, politics and politicking is a negotiation, really. So, 99.3, hello? Sandra, good, 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 good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? Uh, it's been a while. Um, you see, the, the, to me, I don't really understand the idea of... Uh, Zoning back to the north. Okay. What we want at this time in this country is how to move this country forward. Okay. You see, I, I, I wish you can lay your hands on this book, Why Nations Fail. Hmm. It, this, is, this is why Nigeria is not moving forward. Okay. We're not talking of north. We shouldn't be talking of zoning to whoever. And again, that year you say uh, the, the Jonathan run for three terms. Uh, no, no, no. He um, finished Yaradua's term, then did one term. So if you count it, um, it means the South has done three terms, the North has done three terms. Why? It, okay, then I just go into the argument of why, 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 why your calculation is saying three terms. This is, he completed some of his boss's tenor. Mm -hmm. So why is, why is it shouldn't be uh, assumed 
to be three terms of the South. Okay, so he finished Yaradua's term, then did one of yes. his own. So that's a third term for the South. So three terms and one year. So it's basically three terms. And it's the same calculation I did for the North as well. So you have um, um, two, uh, two terms for Buhari. Uh, so two terms three years for the North, uh, so basically three terms. Because when you look at um, Yaradua, who did one term, one incomplete term, so that's a few years there. You add Yaradua, you add Buhari, that's essentially three terms. You add Obasanjo, you add Jonathan, that's essentially three terms since 1999. Sandra, hmm? Nigerians, they, they, they bleed, their heart bleeds every night before they go to bed. And why, why they wake up in the morning at the same thing? Mm. Nigerians go to bed without food because we, the, if, if, if this thing and it's, it's telling more on those who are the city dwellers. City dwellers, I've just returned from the village for the last month's holiday. Okay, the, we, we, the, the problem we face in the city is not in the, it's not in the, uh, in the village, okay. and we don't want uh, we, the, uh, the idea or the, 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 this zoning thing should not be. Part of our constitution. It's not part of our constitution. It's not part of the electoral act. So why are we thinking this? This, this, this is, I don't know if it's a stunt or a, a, a new mantra for for the country and just to, just to uh, make the country look very difficult for Nigeria and the, the teeny you that are jobless. Well, uh, some people will argue that it's an important conversation to have because of how. Uh, it should it be a conversation? Sandra. Well, this in, a, in an ideal, in an ideal world, in an ideal world, in an ideal world, it shouldn't be a conversation, right? But we still have um, concerns. I mean, look at what happened in 2021 alone, where we had different parts of the country talking about wanting to be their own countries. You had the Biafra agitation. You had the Odudua agitation. You had the uh, Niger Delta agitation as well. Everybody saying, "Oh, we want to be our own country," and a lot of it stems from feeling like at the center there's not enough representation. So, so that's what that's where the zoning comes from. Zoning feels like, oh, it's a way to ensure that each zone in the country feels represented. Now, the, the, man, the man you are zoning to, is he a foreigner? Is he is he a Briton? Is he an American? Is he not the same Nigerian who has the same Nigerian mentality and ideology? Fair enough. We're not talking of moving the country forward. We are talking of enriching uh, individuals. These are indi it's individuals who, who, who is what we are trying to enrich. They have to make them look famous. Mm. And uh, famous in such, in such a negative way. I'm, I'm with you. Thank you so much for calling us. Uh, again, my personal preference really is, is not up for... Um, I'm not um, talking about my personal preference here. I'm talking about why we've gotten to the point where zoning is even a conversation. Uh, we've talked about uh, more people who are talking, who are sending us messages. So let's look at the messages, right? Sammy Satellite Town says, Don't mind, Dr. C. Nobody sent him. One thing is that, as far as that man is concerned, uh, Bam Bamanga Tuka and Atiku are looking for anything. We said, uh, I'm not sure you know what you want to say to me. So take a look at it again and uh, come back and let's talk, yeah? So we've got this message here. Sandra, your calculation is wrong. GEJ is from the south, so you can't add the two years of late Yaradua to GEJ. You'll be confusing the people. The north has done 10 years uh, only, Sandra. The south has done 14 years already. That's four years. You cannot transfer the Yaradua um, left two years to the south. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, this person also says it's the turn of the North to be president in 2023 if zoning will be used as a yardstick over competence. North has only had has only done 10 years as president, while the South has done 14 years already. Baba Obasanjo, eight years. Gulag Jonathan, six years. Buhari will be eight years next year, plus two years of late year Adua. That's 10 years. Let's be fair in our judgment of this zoning matter. All right. You didn't leave your name, but thank you very much much for sending your message in we've got andrew erasmus who says the biggest problems in nigeria are the politicians buhari claimed that there was no subsidy during campaigns in the name of grabbing power why are we then still talking about subsidy these people are shameless andrew erasmus with that message there i really don't care about who is ruling i just want a nigerian to be president not nigerian president solomon is satellite town with that message he also said last last we go day all right i'm tired of the vague policies and bills that these people are passing what i'm interested in the most is if you win 
uh, through a party, you cannot decamp to another party while in office. And if you must, you'll have to leave that office. Secondly, no cross carpeting a year to election. Solomon from Satellite Town, thanks for your message. Um, we've got this really great message from Ebi Ambo on Facebook, but I can't find it anymore. Uh, Adeshino Ayatoimbo says, banning sachet and small bottle alcohol alone is somewhat uh, hypocr hypocritical and it's an exertion of energy on the wrong course. Those guys will still drink uh, even, if it takes, even if what it takes is to contribute money for a big bottle that is um, licit. The reasons why a chunk of people resigned to this act is not yet addressed. The only advantage is just that plastic and nylon refu uh, refuse littering the streets will reduce, and this is why it should extend to all products packaged in sachets and plastics. In as much as we don't have a culture of, or discipline of environmental clean cleanliness, and the so-called government is less concerned. Adeshino, with that message there on Facebook. It's a lot of words, sorry. That's why I'm reading it like that. Okay, let's take a look at this message here from Miolensky, who says... Um, the, uh, these people joke a lot. How can government just get to know that removal of subsidy will cause hardship? Have they not been living in this country all these years? Uh, APC, the Minister of Finance, and all the people that supported the removal should bury their heads in shame. Let me give the government little advice. They should borrow money to repair the refineries. When it starts working fully, then the government should remove the subsidy. We all know that the reason that they agreed to pay subsidy is just because election uh, is by the corner. All right. So I guess Miolenski agrees with uh, Olimide Akpata. The next 15 minutes of this show is brought to you by Amber. Which means that uh, we'll have to pause the conversations we've been having so far and uh, pick it up again from 4 p.m. Between 4 and 4.15, you and I will keep talking about some of the uh, things that we've discussed on the show today. So we've talked about the latest milestones on the road to 2023. I told you that um, NAVDAC has ordered a rolling ban on alcohol in small pet bottles or sachets. And I also told you that um, the federal government um, is backtracking on its plan to end false subsidy from July. That was our second story. Let's take a very quick break, courtesy Amber, Amber Drink, and then we'll uh, tell you a bit more about Amber, and then we'll give you a chance to win some, some recharge cards, courtesy Amber. Abby, I am Sandra Ezekwesli. This is Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. We start the day, uh, well, we start 3 p.m. by bringing you three of the biggest stories of that particular day. And today is no different. The fourth big story is Amber. It's Amber time. Don't go away. I have to read for my exams, but I feel so sleepy. Hey, drink Amber. Oh, more. This walker. I die, I go. I like 